Hello, and welcome to the Autistic Women and Non-Binary Networks Liberating Webinar Series. My name is Lydia XZ Brown, sign name L Brown, pronouns they, them. I'm a youngish East Asian person with short black and teal hair, wearing a jacket with a pin that says difficult, difficult, lemon difficult, and a shirt that has the joke from the Oatmeal's cartoon about the gay roller 2000, which was a joke about a Rush Limbaugh quote about the gay steamroller, steamrolling innocent Americans, quote unquote. It's a great cartoon that you can look up. For today's session, just as it has captioning, by clicking on the CC button at the bottom of your screen and clicking to show subtitle or view full transcript. You may also access the captions through the stream text link that was provided by your email and is available in the chat box if you are on Zoom. We have ASL interpretation available and that interpretation will be provided throughout this conversation and through our Q&A time. You are also welcome to join our conversation on social media using the hashtag liberating webinars. Today's conversation is about what it means to do communications access in a world where we're increasingly doing digital organizing, creating digital spaces, organizing between online and offline spaces, and as different people are moving at different paces in the continued pandemic into hybrid spaces of both online and offline interaction. And today I'm really excited that our conversation will be led between two accomplished disability rights advocates who I've learned a lot from over many years. First, I'd like to introduce Latif H. McLeod, an accomplished writer and scholar currently pursuing a doctorate with the Anthropology and Social Change Department at California Institute of Integral Studies. He published two books of poetry, A Declaration of a Body of Love in 2010, and Whispers of Crip Love, Shouts of Crip Revolution in 2020, and is writing a novel entitled The Third Eye is Crying. He is a co-host of the podcast, Black Disabled Men Talk, www.blackdisabledmentalk.com. Com. Next, I'd like to introduce Cal Montgomery, he, him pronouns, a physically disabled autistic activist with a chronic illness. His educational achievements include attending three fourth grades and becoming skilled at egg carton caterpillars. He has been trying to engage in disability rights since 1994. And I would argue you've been leading in disability rights spaces since 1994 or earlier, but that may be a matter of my opinion. Our conversation today is about what it means to meaningfully do access, especially around communication and languages within and outside of disabled communities. And with that, I'll turn the conversation over to Cal and Latif. Hi, this is Cal. Um, Latif asked me to go first. Uh, let's see, I think I look today like a large black box or something. So let's just all pretend that I'm very good looking. Um, as long as we're doing image description, let's do fantasy description as well. I think one of the core problems that we have um, in, in, in worrying about communication access is that we don't fully even understand what communication is. Uh, I hear a lot of uh, speech and language pathologists talking about communication as a form of transferring information from one source to another. And that's not exactly wrong, but a significant amount of human communication and communication with other species, if you think about your dogs and your cats and whatever, um, is more about connection. You know, it's, it's, it's everything from catching somebody's eye, and I realize that's a very um, neurotypical way of doing it, but I've seen it happen between 
autistic people too, if you're comfortable enough with each other. Um, a hand on a shoulder, again, assuming not tactile defensiveness. These things mean something beyond just the transfer of information. Um, so we, we fundamentally misunderstand what, what uh, communication is by, by sort of simplifying it down. And then at best, we offer the bare minimum of communication to many people, um, and particularly the minimum of communication that will help them to do what we want them to do. Uh, so we're facing a whole range of problems from the people at the very top refusing to hand on the mic um, to the people uh, supporting folks uh, with the most significant uh, support needs who may not even understand how to tell what's being communicated to them by the person they're with. Uh, Latif, did you have comments? Hello, this is Latif, he and him pronouns. For a visual description of myself, I am a black man with cerebral palsy, beard, and I am a yellow button-up shirt. Communication is essential for human X experience I B. Believe. And. We. Still have a Long way to go. Before all voices are heard in Our society and validated.
along with physical disabilities that prevent people from adequately communicating live in and a society that this tends to ignore people with less social capital and power so we have to rectify this situation so that all people are heard communication is essential for the human experience i believe and we still have a long way to go before all voices are heard in our society and validated
along with physical disabilities that prevent people from adequately communicating. We live in a society that tends to ignore the people with less social capital and power. So we have to rectify the situation so that all people are heard. Thank you. I don't think we have any disagreement there, to be honest, Latif. Um, and I think there are many nuances for how that has to be done. There are many forms of oppressions that affect how this works uh, and so on. Honestly, more than, than I even know how to enumerate, much less address. But yes, I think you're exactly right. I think that communication... As weird as this sounds to many ears to say it, communication is not equally distributed across society. And, and we're talking about everything from kids who need augmentative and alternative communication devices um, and can't get them until they jump through a series of hoops to people who have never been offered the opportunity to speak uh, it, to, to a group of people and have never developed the skills or the comfort in, in doing it uh, to people who are really honestly in a position to lead, except that the leadership before them will not pass on their turn. Mm. We're struggling with people who, uh, as we move to an online society, can't access um, uh, the online world because they don't have the infrastructure. We're looking at people who can't access the online world because the new infrastructure of an accessible web uh, is not being built. Um, it's just, it's a very broad topic. Uh, and, and I think we're struggling at many levels of it, if that makes sense. Yes. It does Cal and you touch touched on. Many points that are essential for us to have more equity in communication access the digital divide has to be addressed so
all. People can access the and internet and we need to make it a priority that everyone in this country should have access to a form of communication that they can utilize just like everyone should have access to health care but that is another talk yes it does count and you touched on many points that are essential for us to have more equity and communication access the digital divide is to be addressed so all people can access the internet and we need to make it a priority that everyone in this country should have access to a form of communication that they can utilize just like everyone should have access to health care but that is another talk I agree, Latif, and I want to focus on where you said that um, we all need access to a form of communication that we can utilize, because I think very often for some people, it is considered acceptable to have less utilization, shall we say, of a form of communication. When I was coming up, um, we did not have icon-based uh, AAC I mean, it existed, but 
I'd never seen it in the autism community ever. And, and it slowly developed. And we've seen amazing progress with it and, and people making amazing progress with it. But as we, again, move into a more digital and less um, mechanical period of, of our lives, we are continuing not only to repeat the patterns that have led to structural injustices in the past, but build new structural injustices. For instance, uh, there are neighborhoods in this country where you can speak only one dialect of English as long as it's the dialect used by the people of power and you can be considered a full and complete communicator. But we have plenty of kids who um, live in a more richer linguistic area and to become full communicators within and competent communicators within their communities, they don't just need access to the same dialect that Donald Trump uses. They don't want to sound necessarily like Donald Trump all the time. They need access to Spanish. They need access to AAVE. They need access to so many other languages. They need access to so many other dialects of English. And to be honest, we're just getting to the point where a lot of AAC providers are capable of drawing stick figures in brown. So we're not making very fast progress towards this even as more and more of us are flooding online and using online for more and more things, and we are building an online society, we are building many of the same old um, injustices right into this in new ways. Uh, and I look to the blind community here because of the disability subcommunities, um, they are in large part out in front fighting for digital access, for a disability in particular. Disability, uh, d disability, particular digital access. Thank you. That is so true. And we are so behind in the technology to allow everyone to communi communicate in As there authentic selves, but some progress has been hmm? 
made the voice Since the synthesizer manufacturer company. Acapella has recently Produced and African American male and and Female voice for AAC. Devices so companies are Beginning to realize that a generic Voice for AAC devices will not cut it in the Twenty first century, then there is the Company vocal in I 
D, which allows people to constructed construct their own synthesized voice but that can be very cost Prahib prohibitive that is so true and we are so behind in the technology to allow everyone to communicate as their authentic selves but some progress has been made the voice synthesizer manufacturer company acapella has recently produced an african-american male and female voice from aac devices so companies are beginning to realize that a generic voice from AAC devices will not cut it in the 21st century. Then there is the company Vocal ID, which allows people to construct their own synthesized voice, but that can be very cost prohibitive. I agree. We're definitely seeing some signs of progress, um, but I'm all, I, I, and I think we would, uh, Again, both agree that we're also not seeing some signs that we really should be seeing. And, and again, I think it comes back, at least for me, to this, uh, this idea that all communication is, is a transfer of information. So that really all anybody needs us to communicate is things like, I have to go to the bathroom. And I'm not denigrating, I have to go to the bathroom. There's times when that's really, really what I want to communicate to somebody. But sometimes uh, I have other things to communicate as well. And, or sometimes I have other things I want somebody to communicate to me. And sometimes I don't know what somebody might communicate to me or they might not know what I might communicate to them. And sometimes it's not even so much information as, again, human connection. And somehow it seems acceptable to leave some people out of all this. And again, I'm being deliberately vague because there are multiple uh, marginalizations to whom this happens. And I don't want to try to come up with an ex ex exhaustive list and leave somebody out. But, you know, we have people like Gwyneth Paltrow for whom expression is she is supported to do artistic expression she is supported to do expression in her idea of what sort of lifestyle people should have who are not supported to express that they have a bird on the windowsill which many people might want to remark on um and and somehow somewhere it's not just that this happens it is that in very many circles of society, it is considered acceptable. It's considered like that's enough. And I resent that. Okay, shutting up now. Right. Cal. And... I think your
comments. Comments are referring to the Stratify, stratified, hierarchical divisions. We have in. Society that are so ingrained in us that we don't notice what is wrong that we listen to every Word of the likes of Gwendy Paltro and people like us with Our disability get ignored every day by. People around them, it
has to do with our culture and what we mm -hmm. that and yeah. what we don't right cal and i think your comments are referring to the stratified hierarchical divisions we have in society that are so ingrained in us that we don't notice what is wrong that we listen to every word of the likes of beneath pal drawing people like us with our disability get ignored every day by the people around them it has to do with our culture and what we value and what we don't. Yes, and I think it also has to do with um, or having become so accustomed to looking in certain directions and seeing certain kinds of people that it becomes harder and harder for the people who are included to see who is not included. Um, it becomes harder and harder to notice who isn't there because you're so used to them not being there that you almost assume they don't belong there. Um, and we are accustomed to living in a world in which Gwyneth Paltrow matters more than Lydia. I don't agree that that's the kind of world we should live in. But, and I, I don't think, Latif, that you do either, but it's almost hard to look away sometimes because we are so socialized to look for the same kinds of people, if not the same exact people, but at least the same kinds of people. Um, sorry. Hang on. Um, at least the same kinds of people in the same kinds of places all the time. This is Lydia. We're wrapping up on time. But if either of you wants to add one last thought before we turn it over to our community members for questions, I definitely want to invite you to share that one last burning thought. Latif? I enjoyed this conversation and I just want to say that we can build communities and societies where 
all. Our voices matter. It will just take our time and F effort to do so I enjoyed this conversation and I just want to say that we can build the communities and societies where all our voices matter. It will just take our time and effort to the soul. I, I think this is one of those topics where 10,000 autistics could info dump for 10,000 years and never get to the bottom of it. So I won't try and sum anything up. Um, but I, uh, all of you for, for giving me the chance uh, to participate in what I think is such an important conversation and a conversation that is going to go places that we never imagine. Because as we give more people a chance to express themselves, they will lead us in directions that the people who already have that access don't even imagine yet. And so I think that's the really exciting thing is that by enabling communication, we can able, enable uh, futures beyond our dreams. Um, and again, as Latif said, it will take a while, but I think that's what's so critical about what we're talking about today. So, and thank you very much, AWN, Lydia, Latif, everybody for this opportunity. This is Lydia. Thank you so much, Cal and Latif and to our interpreter for the webinar, Deblois, and to AWN's programs and education assistant, Nancy, for all of your work in helping make this possible. And now we'll open it up to questions from you all. If you haven't already shared your question, you're welcome to do so in our chat on Facebook or by tweeting at us. And we'll do our best to try to share as many of your questions as we can. Thank you. This is Lydia. I want to welcome Latif back to join everyone. Uh, Cal is unfortunately not able to join this evening for Q&A due to health issues. It looks like we have one question that is really for, for Cal, so we'll have to pass that along uh, separately. Um, we have a question from Facebook. As a healthcare provider, how do you think doctors and nurses need to help or support patients with communication barriers to make sure their issues are heard? I think Hospitals can invest in low tech AAC like picture boards and
Так. Caps. On. Tabulates to aid people with communication. Needs aspect, especially if that need is. Two, two, a recent injury. I think hospitals can invest in low tech AAC like picture boards and AAC apps on tablets to aid people with communication needs, especially if that need is due to a recent injury. This is Lydia. We have another question from Rachel, who says, thank you. Is there anywhere we can go to learn about communication access and how to build it in to systems, organizations, and programming? Um, I would suggest right away, before I turn it over to you, Latif, uh, there is a resource from the organization HERD, H-E-A-R-D, which is called The Revolution Must Be Accessible. It's specifically related to access doing virtual work and it came out during the pandemic, but it is about communication access and communication justice. So I definitely recommend using, using that. Uh, Latif? Also, some good organizations to look into our United States Society for Augmentative and Alternative Communication and I am working with a new organization 
cold. Communication first. But we focus on policy. Issues more. Also, some good organizations to look into our United States Society for Augmentative and Alternative Communication. And I am working with a new organization called Communication First, but we focus on policy issues more. This is Lydia. Um, we also had a comment from Marguerite in the chat, who I think addressing the earlier question about healthcare says, for me, I have CO and hearing speech impairment. I communicate with my voice, but sometime with ASL interpreter in the medical field when I go to doctor appointments. If not understood, I will rephrase it. Um, we have another question from Facebook, and then we have a question from Marguerite. So the question from Facebook is, when do the panelists feel most seen and respected in the healthcare field? When I... can get a one and on one appointment with my doctor and am able to Right out the issues that I have before. And I feel that it is a good encounter when I can get a one-on-one -on -one appointment with my doctor and am able to write out the issues that I have beforehand I feel that it is a good encounter this 
This is Lydia. Uh, our question from Marguerite is, how can we get a communication devices that don't cost too much? apps that are now available on phones tablets and Computers are far less expensive than dedicated AAC devices that are also on market apps that are now available on phones tablets and computers are far less expensive than dedicated aac devices that are also on the market this is lydia we do have two more questions but we don't actually have more time with our communications access team i'll share what those questions are and then I'm going to ask if Latif and Cal, when he's feeling better, uh, are able to respond separately. And perhaps we can share those responses through AWN social media. Um, those questions are one of them from Bridget. Do you have any advice for me as a parent of an AAC user or advice for my child? My 10 year old son uses a speech generating device and he gets frustrated by people not being patient listening even his speech language pathologist. And then the other question, which is from Facebook says, we are an inherently intersectional people. And I'm wondering how those of us in the neurodivergent community, black community, or whichever community we call home can be stronger allies for our relatives with communication differences within those communities. How do we become better allies and accomplices in moving towards and more communication inclusive spaces. And so with that, I will pass those questions on to Cal, Latif, if you want to uh, brainstorm ways that we could get some responses out to folks, uh, we will try our best to do that since those are both very important questions. I wanna extend a thank you again to our entire communications access team for the live portion of tonight, in particular to our captioner, Mike, to our ASL interpreter, Juniper, and to AWN's team members, Nancy and Kaylee, who were on here. And of course, absolutely uh, not last or least, our presenters, Cal and Latif, for your time. Thank you so much for joining us, and we hope to see you at our next liberating webinar. We will announce soon what that will be and when the date is, and we hope that we'll see you then. Have a fantastic evening. Thank you. Thank you.